For our next lesson, we're going to be talking about ethers. Now, ethers and alc alcohols are often taught together because they are very similar in their structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent R. Now, R represents any carbon chain. So two carbons, 20 carbons, it doesn't matter. So an alcohol, by definition, is where you've got a carbon chain attached to an oxygen attached to a hydrogen. This, by definition, is alcohol. By contrast, an ether is a little bit different. That's where you've got a carbon chain attached to an oxygen attached to anything that's not a hydrogen, so another carbon chain. So here we've got two examples of ether chains. So what we need to do is when we're naming these, we need to figure out what's going to be the longer chain and then the smaller chain. Okay, so in this particular case here, this is going to be an ethane. So the small chain off here is going to be a meth, because there's one carbon. Now to indicate that it's part of an ether, it's going to be called a methoxy. Okay, so methoxy indicates that it's a carbon group attached to an oxygen attached to a longer carbon chain. So therefore, the definition of this piece that's named right here is a methoxy ethane. So when we're naming the ethers, you look for the root. And you name the longest chain that's, a bo that's bonded to the oxygen atom. So for the prefix, you look for the other side of the oxygen chain. And the ending for there of that word is going to be an oxy. Otherwise, the rules stay the same from previous lessons. So let's go through this right here. So we can see that this piece right here, this is going to be our main chain. So the main chain is going to be a hexane. We can see the spot right here. At spot 4, we've got a methyl group. We can see right here, this is going to be three carbons. So therefore, this is going to be a propoxy. So now we've got these three things in mind. The parent alkane is hexane. The second prefix is a 4-methyl. The first prefix is a 3-propoxy. We need it at spot 3 because we need to indicate where this the ether branches off. So therefore, our name is 3-propoxy, 4-methylhexane. So if we look at this example right here, we can see we've got a one carbon chain, and this piece is going to be for our armethoxy. At spot two, we've got a two carbon chain, so this is going to be an ethyl. So when we put this all together, the root chain is pentane. The second prefix is two ethyl. The first prefix, because it's going to be the most important one, is one methoxy to indicate it's at spot one. So therefore, our answer is one methoxy, two ethyl pentane. So now, it's asking us to draw out 2-methoxy, 4-methylpentane. So let's work backwards. We've got our pentane chain. So therefore, C, we draw a 5-carbon chain. It's telling us at spot number 4, we've got a methyl. At here, it's telling us at spot 2, we've got a methoxy. So by definition, because we've got an oxy, we've got an oxygen here, and then whatever this is. So CH3. So now what we need to do is we need to fill in the remaining hydrogens. Now remember, when you're filling in the hydrogens, each carbon should have four bonds. So there's one hydrogen attached here because there's three other bonds there. So H2, H, and H3. So there's going to be our molecule. If I was to draw that as a line structure, it would look something like this. So one of the things you're going to notice with ethers is they tend to be polar compounds, and that's because of the uneven draw of electrons between the carbon and the oxygen. So if you remember the electronegativity stuff from grade 11 and early in grade 12, that's what we're referring to. 
As a result of it being a polar compound, there's weak dipole dipole interactions. There's no hydrogen bonding in these cases, so therefore it's got a relatively low boiling point. 